Hello everyone, Mike Rempel from Excel Bytes with today's Excel Bytes blog post. Today we're going to take a look at how to record a simple macro in Excel. This was requested by one of my subscribers, Cindy. So let's just jump right into it and see how to do this in Excel. So when you're recording a macro in Excel, basically what you're doing is turning on the recording device, going through the steps that you want to record, and then stopping that recording. So it's very important that you know the steps you want to go through. For example, what you don't want to do is start the process and then hit undo sometimes or change your mind in the middle or make a mistake and have to do a undo or a correction in the process. So I strongly recommend that you go through the process several times and make sure you know exactly what you want to do before you actually start to record. So that in mind, the next step is to start the recording process. Now you could do that one of two ways. First of all, in the lower left corner of Excel, you'll see a little box down here that if I hover over it, it says no macros are currently recording. Click to begin recording a new macro. You can either click this and when you do, this record macro will pop up or you can go to the view tab in your ribbon and over on the far right, you'll see macros. If you hit the drop down box there, you can select record macro. The next thing you want to do is give your macro a name. Now, when you name your macro, you cannot use spaces. You should avoid any special characters, periods, things like that. So in this case, let's say we want to record a macro to set our formatting of headers a certain way. So for example, let's say in this case I have the months of the year here and I want to format them in a certain way. I want them to have a purple background, maybe a white text. I want them to be bold and centered and I want to put borders around them. So I want to record a macro that will do that automatically so I don't have to go through those four or five steps every time I want to format the headers or any text that I have on my worksheet in this fashion. So let me just undo that and we'll go through the steps of how to record that macro to do those specific things. So first thing I want to do is I want to select the cell that I want to format because again the recorder is going to record everything you do so if my active cell happens to be down here and I start recording then I click up here then the first step is go to cell B1 and you may not want that to be the first step in your macro so for something like formatting you probably just want to do it to your active cell. So I've selected cell B1 before I start my macro. I'm going to click this down arrow, record macro. Now I'm going to call this uh, header style. And again, I'm not putting any spaces, no special characters, etc. in there. You can establish a shortcut key for this like control V, control S, whatever, but be very careful with that because for example, if you create the shortcut that is one that Excel already uses like control S for save or control C for copy and you name your macro with that shortcut, that will override the shortcut that Excel normally has. So then if you go to use control S to save your workbook, it's not going to do it. Instead, it's going to activate this macro. So I tend not to use these shortcut keys. Next, where do you want to store your macro? You have three choices, a personal macro workbook, a new workbook, or this workbook. If you're going to perform the steps exclusively for the workbook that you're working in, maybe multiple times, then you want to select this workbook. If this is a process that you want to use across multiple workbooks, like formatting headers or something, 
you want to put it in your personal macro workbook and that will make it accessible regardless of what Excel file you are in. Then you can describe the macro, what it does, etc. here. For right now, I'm just going to leave that blank. Now, as soon as I hit OK, everything that I do from this point on will be recorded. So make sure you are ready to do that before you hit OK. So I'm going to hit OK here. Now I want to do that formatting. So I'm going to go up here and select purple. I'm going to go to my font and select white text. I'm going to put all borders around it. I'm going to make it bold and I'm going to make it centered. Now I've included a lot of these shortcuts in my quick access toolbar, but you can go to the ribbon and make the same selections. Now that I have the formatting just like I want it, I can either go up here and select stop recording or go down in the lower corner. There's a square down here that if I select that, that will also stop the recording. So since I've chosen this, I'm going to hit stop recording and now my macro is recorded. So if we go to this drop down and say view macros, here is a list of the macros that I have. I can look at them for just this workbook, which I don't have any, because remember, I put this in my personal XLSB file. So there's all the macros that I have, and here's the header style one that we just created. I'm going to click on Step Into, and this dialog box pops up. And these are the steps now that we just recorded in order to do the formatting we want. Um, you can see some of the things that it did was it created the color, this color that we wanted for the interior, that's the file fill. The font, we selected a uh, tint shade of zero, which makes it white. And this was all the borders we put around it. We made it bold, we aligned it, etc., and then we ended it. So that is the code, the VBA code that was recorded when we just recorded that macro. So let's see how it works. So let's say I want to now take all these cells here and create that format or format them as we just did in the macro. Again, I can do this a couple different ways. I can select this drop down here select view macros I can select that macro and hit run and now it just formatted everything I did there or everything I had highlighted with that format let's say I have uh, several cells here I'll just put Mike in there I'm gonna highlight all those go to macros view macros header style run and now it just formatted all those selected cells just like I had recorded with my macro. If you also have the developer tab on your ribbon, there is a button here that says macros. And if you click that, again, you see that full list. If you don't have the developer tab, all you need to do is right click, say customize the ribbon. This dialog box will pop up and make sure this checkbox here is checked next to developer and that will give you the developer tab. Now, the next thing you might want to consider doing for something that you're going to use a lot is to locate the macro maybe in a quicker way to access it. One of the things I do is, as you saw before in my quick access toolbar, which I locate below my ribbon instead of above, which is maybe where you have it, you can add an icon there to activate your macro. So for example, if I click the down arrow here and say more commands, I can then choose from the left side macros. And here I have the one header style. I can select it and say add, and it just added it to my quick access toolbar. You can also then click on modify and choose a unique icon so you know the difference between each of the macros. In this case, I'm going to select this purple square because we included purple in our formatting. And I'll say OK and OK here. Now you can see I have a purple square here. And if I 
hover over that, it says that it's from my personal workbook, macro workbook, and it's called header style. So again, if I have some cells here, and I'll just type Mike again, with those highlighted, I can just click on that, and it just formatted all those cells, and it was very easy to access. I didn't have to go into the macro list, select it, click on run, etc. Let's take another example of creating a macro. Here I have a file with just some data. So in this scenario, what I want to do is I want to open a new worksheet and then take the data in this sheet, copy it, and paste it in the new worksheet. So again, I'm going to click on this record macro button in the lower corner here. And I'm going to call this copy, paste, data. And I'll say OK. So now the first thing I want to do is open a new worksheet, go back to the original, go to the home, cell A1, highlight the data, copy it, go back to the second worksheet, go to cell A1, paste it, and then go back to the first worksheet, go to cell A1, maybe hit escape, to stop the highlighting of that data and then I'm going to stop the recording. Now just to see if this works I'm going to go ahead and delete the second worksheet that we just created and now I'm going to go to the developer tab my macros I have a macro now called copy paste data hit run and it just went through the whole process, created a new worksheet, pasted that data in there, and then went back to the original worksheet. And if I go to my Visual Basic tab and look in Module 8 here, here's my macro to copy-paste data. So it added a worksheet, it copied it, it went to the other worksheet, pasted it, and then went back to the original worksheet. And all those steps are recorded there. And if you need to, you can go in and maybe make an edit, etc. If your range starts in cell A2, you can just go in here and change that to cell A2. Make sure you save it, etc. One other thing that's very important to know is when you run a macro, you cannot undo it. So, for example, if we go back to our original scenario here, and I just, again, type Mike here, and I run that first macro to format it, I can't do a Control-Z to undo it. Or if you notice up here, there's nothing that I can choose to undo. Macros don't follow that same process as a regular step when you're using Excel. So once you run that macro, that's the way the data is. You cannot undo those steps within that macro. And that's how simple it is to record a macro in Excel. So thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so at my website, excel-bice.com, or at any of the social networks noted below. Thanks a lot, have a great day, and happy Excelling.